Crafts and today we're going to be making some spinning pinwheels. A fairly simple pattern with this particular one and a little more complex with a little more design with this one using beads, a screw and a dowel. Fairly easy to put together. We're going to have a lot of fun making this project and I have provided a number of templates to download off my blog which is betsmakes.com and if you go to the resource library you'll be able to pick up those templates. And just before we get started don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and be a part of our Facebook group which is Bets Makes. Okay let's get started. Alright let's get ready to make our spinning pinwheels and today we're going to start a new project and you can do the same you can follow along with these steps and we simply need to go to the upload to get started on this now I have uploaded that all of the templates that I provided in my resource library if you just go to betsmakes.com resource library you'll find these templates there and you can download them all three six seven of them actually uh, today we're going to be making this one and this is one with the fluted edges and I'll simply click here and I'm going to insert the image into my project now first thing I want to do to make sure everything is going to work I'm going to move it into position to see how large it is going to be I want to keep it fairly small now this one is going to be 9 inches across, which is a pretty big project. So I think that I want to reduce it so that it's approximately 6 by 6. And that'll give us, I might even move it to 7, 7 inches. I don't want it that big. Now it is square, so it's going to be easy to follow through with. And the little black dots in the center are our cut points. Now, if you find they're not large enough when we get to printing this, actually cutting it, you'll want to have your spaces about uh, a quarter of an inch wide. So I think what we'll do is we'll take a look at those dots right away and make those adjustments. Now I'm going to have to ungroup this so that I can get to those dots. So let's come over here and click on ungroup. And you'll see that I have a list of the particular dots. So I'm going to click on the first one in the list here and it selects the one in the center. And I'm going to come up and I'm going to see that this dot is 0.126. Well, we want it at 0.25. So we're going to make it 0.25 so that it's larger. And then I'm going to click on the next one in place and I'm going to do the same thing. So we want 0.25 and you'll notice it changes the height at the same time. Now you'll also notice that this is not going into the center. So I'm going to just move it slightly and I'm going to move this other one that we did slightly so it stays approximately the center because you don't want to have too thin an edge of paper on the other side so I may move this up just a little bit I can use my arrow keys to move it up but it seems to have moved too much just down a little bit and that looks pretty even between this side and this side we're going to do the same with this one as well we want it 0.25 and this is really important that you know how to change uh, these SVG files when you bring them in and adjust them for yourself so that looks pretty centered we have two more to do and this one once again 0.25 it automatically adjusts and then we'll put it into place and the final one 0.25 and that looks pretty good and we'll move it into place. It doesn't have to be perfect. I want to get it close to the center as possible here. Now that looks pretty good. Now I want to highlight it again and regroup it because if I move it around I want to be able to move it together. Now one other thing you have to note when you're in design space, even though I have grouped it and I clicked on make it, you'll find the dots will be separated from the rest of the design. So in order to stop that from happening and have it come out as one singular piece, 
we are going to attach it together. So now it's attached. When we go to make it, it will stay together and it will cut as one piece. Now, one last thing here is I want to save it and I'm going to call it spinning pinwheel. And I'm going to call it curved design because we have different designs. And this one has some curves in it and simply click on save. It's going to save my project. I always like to save them ahead of time before making them. Here you're going to select which machine you're going to make it on. In my case, it is my maker. Now I will click on make it. It should come out with one mat and I know the dark mat is really difficult to see the dark lines. But if I grab this in the middle, you should be able to see it and you can place it up in the corner. And that looks pretty good. I know it's a little difficult to see, so now I can click on continue. And now it's going to want to connect with my maker. You can hear it whirring in the background. Should just take a few seconds. We're going to set our material. Now these are materials I use quite often. I'm going to click on popular and I'm going to suggest you use medium cardstock for your setting. And the reason medium cardstock is because the windmill will be sturdier when you put it together. Now all you need to do is load your fine point blade in clamp B and you press your load mat button and then press your cut button when it is ready to go. So that is the first portion just in design space. Next, I'll go through the demo on how to put these together and have a lot of fun with them. Well, here we are. We have our material cut out, but I just want to go over a few things on my table here. And this is before we get going on the project. Here's some examples of ones that I put together before with a few beads. You can see these turn, and it's the same rounded design. There's one of them. Uh, this one is the same design, but I used a different template, and this time I didn't attach it to anything. I simply put a brad in place with some pretty middle and decoration, and that can be used just on a tabletop as a flower. So it is a pinwheel design, but you can do some different things with it. Another one I used, which was another one of my templates, and I curled the ends. Same thing, a little embellishment at the top. This one has a bead. And on the back, I used a piece of plastic so it would help turn it and keep it spacing so it didn't hit. And that was a lovely design as well. And then, of course, the one we're working on today is this one. I've used a dowel for this one and a number of beads and a little embellishment on the top. So this is the one we're aiming to make, but we don't need to use a dowel for the stick. We can use something else as well. And I purchased these uh, reusable drink straws that you can actually use in place of the dowel if you prefer. And the reason I want to use it, you can still screw in your screw into here and it is still sturdy enough. So we have the dowel or the straw that we can use. I have an awl because I need to poke a hole in here in order to get the screw. We have two different screw types. This one is a number eight wood screw and it's two inches in length. And that's for heavier duty. This one is a number six wood screw, also two inches in length. And I prefer to use the number six screw. And the reason is, is I can fit my beads on more easily. So I have a bunch of beads here that I bought at the dollar store, different sizes, different shapes that we can play with. Over here I have some eyelets and in order to put part of it together we're going to use one of these eyelets for the center so it's easy to spin. This is the eyelet tool that came with this set of eyelets. I bought it at the local dress shop 
and I paid $2.99 for the box of eyelets, including the tool inside it that I need. I'm going to need a hammer in order to put these together. And finally, I'm going to need the screwdriver to get the screw into the dowel. So we have a number of pieces that we need here, and of course I have printed out our windmill. I actually had two copies of it, and we'll just work with one right now. And I have another one here that we can try using a different method with. So I will put that one aside for the time being, and this is the one we want to work with. Now I have already put together one that has the red on the outside, so maybe we'll do the blue. So if we want the blue exposed, we know that we have to bring the outsides in. So this is a little more difficult piece. You're just going to hold them in place. And we'll put the blues together this way, one at a time. Pretty simple. And I'm just holding them in place for now. Because what we want to do is we want to place an eyelet in the center. I'm going to let this go for now. We want the eyelet to have the smooth side on the top and the rough side on the bottom. So it's going to be a little more awkward when we go to put this together. So I'm going to push the eyelet through one of these and it may be a bit snug. There it goes, it snapped into place. Do all four this way. Where you can see it and I want to make sure they're snug into place if you can see that how snug they are and finally the fourth one and I know sometimes your fingers can get in the way so all four of those are in place but now I have to push it through this center piece so all I'm going to do is push it down into the center now this is going to be the more difficult part because I can't hammer on my mat here but I am going to place this underneath so that it holds my eyelet in place. Then I'm going to take my eyelet tool. There are two ends to it. And this is the side I want to use. This is the one that's going to make the eyelet separate out. So I'm going to just squish those together. And in one second, I'm just going to move it off to the side here so I can apply my hammer. Grab my hammer. And using that tool on a harder surface, you'll see that the fluted sides or the bend sides are now on this side, and now we have a perfect eyelet all ready for our windmill. Now we are going to be using the number six screw, but I don't want it to go right through like this. I want to put some beads in the front. So we have a number of beads, and since we're working with a blue, let's see if I can find one with a big enough hole. I'm just going to push the bead directly through, then through the eyelet, and let's turn it on the other side, and then we can add some other beads. The biggest point here is when we go to screw it into the dowel, you don't want it to go in very far. Probably, oh, a quarter inch at Max. So I'm just going to put this down. So I need to poke a hole where I want the screw to go. Now this takes a little bit. I can't also hammer here, but I just want to get it started without cracking. So I'm putting some pressure on it, but not a lot. And then I'm going to, I'm just going to take this apart. I just want to make sure that the screw will go into place. I'm just going to turn it by hand to start. And I'm going to use my screwdriver. And just screw it in place. Because if I do this ahead of time, then I'm not going to mess up my windmill when it's time. I don't have to push it in very far. There we go, that looks far enough. Now that's going to be steady enough when we have our pinwheel all in place. So I'll just unscrew it. So we have that piece ready. 
gonna put my bead back on and push it through. Now we're gonna take the back side and then we're gonna load some other colored beads in place. So we don't have blue. Here's a black one. I could probably add a black one. And the idea is to build it up so you just have a small portion left. So maybe we can use one of these, uh, what I call beehive ones. Now it still looks like I have a fair amount of space, so maybe that beehive is not going to work as well. Uh, let's see, what else can we do here? This one might be a bit longer. It's not going to fit in there. Uh, let's try another blue one. No, that one doesn't quite fit either. It's a red one. You have to find one. Oh, there's, there's a good one there. Now we still have too much screw space here, so maybe we can find a smaller one that fits in. Let's go for orange here. I see an orange one here with a nice big hole. Now, as you can see, I screwed it down pretty hard, but now I'm not getting any motion. So I'm going to take this one off and see if we can find something smaller. Maybe I'll just use one of these. And that looks like enough room for our dowel. And now, I'm going to turn this over. And <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing because this is the hard part for me, is trying to get the dowel in place. Let's see if I can turn it a bit this way, just to get it going. And now I have enough slack. Here's my screwdriver. I want to hold it enough in place. I don't want it too tight. And now I see that I've got our windmill working and it's a bit slack. So you notice that it is hitting at the bottom. So this is all I did to stop that is you just move it up a bit, just give it a twist. And now we have a great windmill. All you want to do now is maybe add a sequin or another little piece that sticks on to give it a nice little design. I always have a lot of different pieces that can fit in. In this case, I will use some uh, sugar root bead sugar dots. I have lots of these, so let's open this package of sugar dots. And since we have pink on the inside, I can add a little sugar dot here at the end so we don't see the screw. And there we go. That's the perfect windmill. Looks fantastic. <clears throat> now I had mentioned before that you could also use this in place. Same process. All you would do is screw this in place of the dowel and you would have the same thing. So I hope you enjoyed this project and until next time. Well I hope you had a lot of fun making these pinwheels. I just love this one. I love the design and the fact that I could either make it with the red inside or I could reverse it and use the blue as well. Adding a little embellishment to the front, using some different size beads plus a screw. In this case it was a number eight screw and my dowel. And we've made some other ones as well, so you can also use a reusable straw. So when you're finished with a pinwheel, you can just simply cut it off and use your straw. Anyways, this project was a lot of fun. I hope you really enjoyed it. And just before you go, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Visit my resource library at betsmakes.com library. And join our Facebook group. Until next time. I sure hope you enjoy making those spinning pinwheels.